the Mr. Speaker, what I was wishing the, the sponsor would have done and the drafters would have done would have been to also give it some legislative elegance because I see a lot of repetition that you find the same um, uh, uh, roles that are given the various authorities are almost cut and paste. So there is really no reason in a digitized world and in a progressive world why we should uh, go that way in terms of uh, uh, doing uh, this bill. So I'll be proposing amendments that will be making it leaner and thinner. But going more into substantive issues, Mr. Speaker, I am very happy with the principles that are enshrined within this bill. Uh, some of them um, include sustainable use of resources as a person who is committed to environmental uh, conservation. I think the issue of sustainable use of resources is very important. And if you look at, for instance, the way some of us are using our resources, it's a challenge. It's unfortunate that there's a bill that came up on natural resources that has um, failed, but I think that's one of the things that we need to look at. For example, Mr. Speaker, I'll give you an example. There's a lot of construction that is going on in our counties for roads. If you see, there are small hills that are uh, generating what is needed for the roads. And very soon, there will be no hills in those areas. That is part of actually what is affecting climate change. And so when we are dealing with issues that talk about sustainable use of resources, it's significant and important for me. Secondly, the issue of promotion of equity in the management of natural resources to ensure equitable, equitable access for present and future generations. Mr. Speaker, as a person who is committed to protecting the rights of children, I am very keen on the use of access for present and future generations when we are dealing with resources. And so when this is provided as a value, it's important. The only challenge is that when we are implementing, we forget uh, this. Mr. Speaker had hoped for a bolder approach that also streamlines the roles, as had indicated, but also um, that also ensures that we don't have duplication, both with the counties, national government, and with these authorities. Mr. Speaker, a lot of members have spoken to it, but one of the things I've learned having been in this parliament for a long time is that when we have multiple bodies doing the same thing, they actually, one of them or all of them, become cash cows. And that is why even when parliament tries to streamline, you get a lot of resistance because you will be killing somebody's uh, way of earning money. But I wish we were bolder as a house and sometimes just take the bull by the horns and kill some of these authorities and give the counties greater mandates. But because I know we are not bold as a house, I will propose among amendments that will um, allow the ones who want to steal to steal because I'm not ESCC. Uh, when the ESCC wakes up and decides they want to do their job, uh, they will follow and ensure that these people do their works and, uh, and streamline. Uh, Mr. Speaker, one of the, um, uh, the other things I'd hope to see is a deliberate attempt to establishing a formula for sharing resources within the regions. So that even when you find that one of the authorities is working within the region and has different regions, how do you ensure that within that region there is equity? I support the um, uh, inclusion of gender, youth, marginalized community in the management units of the bodies. And I want to somehow agree with Honorable, Honorable Bayer, and at the same time also agree with the member that, uh, had, uh, that he was raising a point of order for, that yes, we must remember marginalized communities. Coming from a marginalized community myself, Mr. Speaker, I speak to it. I know a lot of people don't consider the low community a marginalized community because of our resilience. We are strong, we work hard, we fight hard, and we do not appear as, appear as marginalized. But over the years, the low community has been marginalized by economic policies due to the nature of our politics as opposition. And it is interesting, you hear a lot of people keep telling us, join the government, yet the same people tell you, we need strong opposition, 
So Kenya must also make up its mind what they want. Uh, that you either choose people who can do good work so that you don't need a, a, an opposition. But if you choose people who are not doing a good job, then don't start screaming you want a good opposition. But having said that, I'd also want to say that there are actually regions that have also benefited from resources because of marginalization. And I think as a country, we must also look at how far different regions have benefited and whether we are all at the same state. You might find an area that was once upon a time or 20 years ago marginalized. It's no longer marginalized. My area is, of course, definitely still marginalized. And then I also speak for the Suba, who is a much smaller community within my constituency that may suffer further marginalization. And on that note, I want to encourage the government that when you are dealing with marginalized community like ours, uh, don't make promises that you don't realize very fast. Like, for instance, more recently, uh, the government made a promise uh, to tarmac the Rusinga Ring Road. And for those of us who are very marginalized, we are really waiting uh, with a lot of uh, uh, interest to ensure this is done. But going back to these uh, regional authorities, Mr. Uh, speaker, I'm just wishing again, uh, and I want to agree with, I think it's Honorable Muragara that had talked uh, the last time, that we needed a, bo a bold approach to fold up these bodies and give some ma the money to counties, but with enhanced oversight roles so that we don't devolve corruption. And I uh, want to reiterate that for me that would actually be a better approach. Again, I think, I don't know whether the Mwongozo is, uh, that talks about uh, the number of eight, but I'm seeing like these bodies are too many, uh, the, the individuals that are proposed in these bodies are too many and perhaps we need to streamline, uh, especially uh, of the local communities. I don't understand what you have a whole number of eight that are coming in. But even within this number of eight, you need to again re-emphasize the issue of inclusion. Mr. Speaker, I would also want to say that one of the things that I've noticed that this bill speaks a lot about the issue of natural resources. And I've said that it is indeed unfortunate that the bill that was talking about natural resource, uh, and especially sharing, died at, I think, uh, second reading. But this bill talks about natural resources without defining what natural resource is. So I don't know what exactly we are talking about in this bill because we must ensure that we define what that natural resource is. Mr. Speaker, I'm also wishing that we could bring amendments, and I'll try that we ensure that these bodies, because we are not bold enough to just uh, send them home, undertake programs and projects on climate change adaptation. Because since they're doing um, programs that have to do with those areas, and these are things that we're talking about as a country, but we don't seem to realize that, for instance, in this country in the last few days, the weather has been extremely hot, which is not very typical. And it's not here. I was in South Africa two months ago, and there was a heat wave. And we're actually suffering the effect of climate change. And the only things we want to act on is where we see money, like where there's a low-hanging fruits that we can deal with at individual levels, at leadership levels, at community levels, to ensure that we deal with these issues. Mr. Speaker, I want to complete because I see that my time is up. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if you can just give me one minute to conclude. No, the interests are overwhelming. It's okay then. With those few remarks, I support with proposed amendments. The Honorable Julius Smelly.